Hi guys, welcome to the Little Farmer's Farm on this beautiful bank holiday Sunday. I'm going to check on our peas, butter beans and sweet corn. See how they're starting off, if they're starting off, fingers crossed. It's a beautiful day today, just come on. So let's have a look and see. Oh yes, looks like we've got a bit of action. Cut my way in. Nice one. We have movement. So the butter beans are at the front, there are 12 of them. And it looks like at least six or seven. Seven are coming through already. And at the back there, we've got the sweet corn. And the sweet corn are popping up, oh yes. I propped that up a little bit on Wednesday. Just to keep it open. I crossed my fingers that the mice wouldn't get in and they haven't so it was a hot day on Wednesday so I've just like opened that I filled up a little bit more water and Bob's your uncle the same here with this one see if any peas are coming through it was only last Sunday I think that we put these put these in there's one Yeah, they're going to be a little bit later, the piece coming through, but that's fine, that's fantastic, that. They're still coming. Very, very, very good. Sorry about the uh, camera work there, folks. I think I'll put that back down altogether, keep them mice out. Well, that's one, one job off the list, anyway, they come through. So it looks like the uh, tomatoes and the cucumbers are doing fine and dandy in here. sound brilliant so we've got the sun gold and we've also got um, we've got some what do you call it it's what they called oh plum red plum tomatoes so red plum and sun gold which are the little cherries the sweet sweet cherry tomatoes that's fantastic stuff great 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 and all the cucumbers are going to be going into this area inside Tiki Tunnel number two. I'm going to move these out of the way because these are going to be used for the peas and what have you, and the butter beans when they start coming through. So I'll move them out. In fact, I'll move them over there in a bit. We've already got the trellises up there for the cukes. So they'll come up and they'll get the tendrils out, they'll grab themselves on, lift themselves up. I might put another low, um, another low piece across there. Yeah, I will do actually. I've got the canes, put another low piece, give them something to grab on. Um, but first I'll weed that out. But yeah, the cukes could potentially go in there today, but I'm going to do it tomorrow now. I'm just going to weed that today. I think you might give it all a good weed in here. Because the weather's been, um, look at that rat, rat all there. Uh, eh, rodents, rodents on the go boys and girls. Second over, overrun with them. That's been weeded last week. Me and Bradley did that. Just needs a good everything needs a good tidy up. Needs a good tidy up some. I have been tidying up before I went into these. I had a bit of a a shift with all the wood. I'm making a big wood pile there because what I'm going to do is do a, a, a big hugel culture bed here. That's going to be about half as as long, but um, the full length there is a hugel culture. Build it up about two feet as a raised bed and then fill it up with all the timber and top it off with all this but again that's another task another job not enough time is it not enough hours isn't there wish I was retired me I'd be I'd be laughing all this weeding needs doing here that's the worst part that this part for the weeds because all the rest of it's not looking too bad although the horses tails and bind weeds are coming through well, this is where we're going to be doing all the pulses, the beans and, and what have you. So it's going to be broad beans and peas in here. I was worried about pollination, but I've talked to a few people who've got these on the, on the plots and uh, they never have trouble. I mean, Terry, who's up there, over that side, top tip Terry Maguire, he hasn't made his polytunnel all the peas around the sides here. 
run along the sides and they grab onto the netting and climb themselves up. You just have to sort of semi support them as they grab on. And then once, the, once, once they've grabbed onto the netting, the tendrils pull them up and they climb up. But um, I put that in so we could actually put some of that, um, that cage stuff, that wire mesh over the top and they could climb that so i'm in two minds i might do that on that side the wire mesh and then on this side i'll just i'll just grow them along the sides here and let them grow up at front in the fronts and then maybe have lettuce in front of the peas there's another set of peas in there none of them have come up as yet but still fingers crossed it's all going to be hopefully coming through to fruition them broad beans have took a battery haven't they See so how they get on. Anyway, let's go and have a look inside our big tent. I must uh, trim my vine as well. The grapevine. Let's see if we've got any uh, any grapes coming on. Yeah, there's a couple of clusters. A couple of clusters and spotted. But these will need thinning out. You only want a vine coming off about every sort of 18 inches, something like that. So I'll just check them first for um, for if they've actually got any uh, got any grapes coming, and then uh, I'll, I'll I'll sort of thin these out. That'll all need thinning off down there as well, stripping away, and leave it at sort of spaces a foot to a foot to 18 inches, something like that coming out. And then when they get to about that, about 18 inches long, and you've got the grapes here, snip them so they don't grow anymore and don't overcrowd themselves. Anyway, that's a, that's a story for another show, isn't it? Some trellis there. I'm going to take the good trellis, I think, and uh, attach that in there as well. And I'll have that for the, for the, for the butter beans, because they're quite tall climbers the butter beans they get to about six or seven feet high so that might be better yep i'll get that in just having a tidy up like i said like i said earlier previously i'm having a tidy around because there's wood everywhere on this plot some of it good most of it not good i nearly said a swear word then Yeah, it just looks a bit unsightly, doesn't it? A bit unsightly. Right, let's crack on. Whew, I've just been through all these... There's two potato beds there on the Lady Farmer's side. And if you look at that, that's what was left in. Because we didn't manage to dig them all out last year. And there's quite a few spuds there. I'd say there's about £10 of spuds there-ish. Of which about six pounds will probably be edible that were left in the ground Fucking unbelievable isn't it it's unbelievable but look at that for a crop a surprise crop some of them is going to be manky I'll have, I'll have a look through them and see what we've got that's actually salvageable that's not a bad haul to be fair any soft ones, brown ones, holy ones, dodgy looking ones, I've discarded, but there's probably about 80% at least that are edible, which is fantastic this time of the year. I'm very welcome in May. Not bad at all. We'll have them. All right, so let's, uh, let's just check in on our onions, see how they're getting along. Now these bad boys at the back of the onions and the garlic <coughs> that we planted in last year in October last year actually the end of October they went in and we've got garlic there and then we've got the Japanese senshu onions here a couple of doubles there a couple of splitters and they're doing alright now these ones at the front we only put in there about three weeks ago and these are the Elsa Craig I do believe they're either Elsa Craig or Centurion or Sturon and because I'm thick I can't remember but these are the ones that we planted in this year so that's last year they've been in now about seven months seven to eight months 
and it'll take about another six weeks before they're ready for pulling up. So sort of like mid-June, they should be ready. I'm going to do a bit of weeding in there as well. I've just spotted a few. That um, horse manure, the well-rotted horse manure, keeps them down, doesn't it? That broken down straw seems to keep the weeds down. If you look on this side, it's not affected much by the weeds, whereas everywhere else is weed central. But yeah, they're coming along them in about six weeks' time. They should be ready then for pulling when they get fatter. They start, they start to put the fatness on around about now and so for the last sort of like next five, six weeks, they'll be getting bigger. Yippee! I've got to say, I do like my grow tent, my new grow tent. It's a cracker. And the plants seem to like it as well. As I'm looking around, there's the uh, cauliflowers in there. They're doing okay. Got eight in that one. And then it carries on with more cauliflower over here. There's another eight there. Sixteen altogether. Couple, four cabbages at the front, four kales at the back. And the leaf's looking in nice, nice condition. For the majority, anyway. That's Calabrese, which you might know as broccoli. And then there's a purple sprouting true broccoli down there. More kale. And nine, uh, sorry, eight cabbages at the front. Now I can use slug pellets in here because the birds can't get to it. The hedgehogs won't be coming in here. And if the rats get in, well, that's a shame, isn't it? But no wildlife, no birdies especially, can get in and eat those pellets. It's only the slugs, it's especially for the slugs. As you can see, there's quite a lot of it in there. And I don't seem to have had any slug damage. That's through overnutrition. There's far too much manure in that bed. And the plants are suffering for it, as you can see. That's uh, spinach in there, and it's got far too much manure in it. Unfortunately, these ones is not as, as much manure, uh, but the kale seems to be doing okay. No real issues there with the kale. Uh, the, uh, the old slug has got in there, but as you can see, they've paid the ultimate price. There's a couple that's got, that's got in there, but I think they've been eating the pellets as well as a couple of the the leaves on on the kale and uh, and it's got them but on the whole sorry not the kale the uh, pak chai but on the whole it's not looking too bad just a couple of little holes where a little grub has got to them by the look of it or some sort of thrip what's that little swine there you'll always get some won't you it's organic growing don't use any herbicides, insecticides or pesticides. Everything's natural on here. So we don't tend to get 100% perfect crops. But what we do get is nutrient rich crops that come through, which is what it's all about. That's a couple of um, cauliflowers there and they're suffering because there's too much. There's actually too much at the baby stage. They're getting overfed, which is no good for man and the beast, is it? But everything else is looking superb. Because it all got top dressed with the uh, organic farmyard manure. Concentrated farmyard manure. But just a light dressing on, on the rest of them, which is really what I should have done. I think I just got rid of the rest of the bag in there, like a fool. And it's, it's counterproductive. Well, it's lunchtime now, boys and girls. So I'm going to take my spuds and get off. Another productive day. That weed train doesn't stop, though. It's kicked in now. It's, uh, it's not shunting anymore, it's on its way. But we'll have to keep on top, won't we? Mick was painting his fence before. As you can see. It's my own fault for loitering, wasn't it, that? With intent. Anyway, keep room at your heads down. And I'll catch you later. Be back on tomorrow for a couple of hours. Weather's going to turn tomorrow. Apparently, it's going to be a bit damper, but uh, we'll uh, we'll sort those grapes those grapes out and get some more spuds in buckets. I'll probably get twelve buckets of spuds done tomorrow. 
and I might well plant up those two beds. I will plant up those two beds that I've just taken the potatoes out of and we'll get rid of all those new potatoes and get them in the ground because they're well late going in. I'm about eight weeks behind everybody else. So yeah, catch you later boys and girls. Take care of yourselves and each other. Have a wonderful rest of Sunday and into Monday. And essentially have a good bank holiday weekend. Catch you later. Ta-da now. Bye-bye.